Macul diverticulum is the topic and we'll abbreviate it MD in this video. Essentially, Macul diverticulum happens uh, embryologically and it's essentially a diverticula that occurs in the distal ileum. And this is the diverticula known as Macul diverticulum. It happens in about 2% uh, of the population in the distal ilium as this congenital uh, sacculation and it's about two inches in length and it is in location wise two feet from the ileocecal valve and that's a very important um, landmark the key thing to this um, Meckel's diverticulum is that it actually contains ectopic tissue such as gastric tissue or pancreatic tissue and that is the basis uh, for a diagnostic study actually that I'll talk about later on so why does this actually happen basically it's an embryologic problem what happens is there's a duct that normally called the vitellin duct that normally atrophies but if this duct fails to atrophy during the embryologic stage you get Meckel's diverticulum so it's just basically uh, an error in embryology so if it does happen what are the consequences well the consequences actually only happen in 2% of the population so it occurs only in 2% of the population but then a further 2% of the people that it occurs in are the only ones that get the complications so the complications are actually quite rare but if they do happen they include bleeding obstruction inflammation diverticulitis and tumors as well The symptoms of uh, Meckel's diverticulum, if there is such complications, include abdominal pain. Uh, cramping pain is often described. Abdominal tenderness. And oftentimes the abdominal tenderness is either below or slightly to the left of the umbilicus. And then another very uh, worrisome but common finding during complications is painless bright red blood per rectum. So painless bleeding rectally. So that's important. So how do you diagnose this? The diagnosis is actually rather difficult because it, 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 it mimics appendicitis and it's very vague in its nature but the, the key diagnostic study is something called a radio nuclide scan also sometimes called a nuclear medicine technetium scan and the scan that I've just mentioned is very uh, specific because it helps to identify that gastric ectopic tissue that the Meckel's diverticulum actually contains. So it's a very unique and very specific test that is used to diagnose Meckel's diverticulum. The treatment, of course, you just go in and surgically resect that. Uh, surgical resection or surgical excision of the diverticula. So let's take a look at a couple clinical vignettes. Mother brings her 12 month old child to the emergency department because he is having painless rectal bleeding. She tells the physician new to her that approximately two months ago the patient was evaluated for anemia by his primary care pediatrician and was prescribed supplemental iron for presumed iron deficiency anemia however 
the iron deficiency anemia has been refractory to iron therapy. Physical exam, this child's stool is repeatedly positive for occult blood. Which of the following is most likely diagnosis? Well, it's a tough one here. Not much uh, information is given, but um, this uh, boy is quite young. He's only a year old, and there's no real history of surgery, so probably not adhesions. Um, Intussusception actually presents with a type of uh, stool that's known as current jelly stool, and that is not described in the uh, clinical vignette. Uh, duodenal ulcers actually would be painful, and this uh, boy or child is described as having painless. So now we're down to two. Between these two, Meckel's diverticulum is the one that the clinical vignette most accurately um, fits. Ulcerative colitis typically does present with bloody diarrhea with mucus, but uh, this child being in the right age group uh, for Meckel's diverticulum fits this clinical vignette the best, most likely diagnosis. And then finally, a 10-year-old boy is admitted to the PEDS unit with rectal bleeding and right lower quadrant abdominal pain. He has no significant past medical history. Temperature is 97, blood pressure is 90, pulse is 80, respirations are 11. Physical exam is normal. Rectal exam reveals bright, le bright red blood, but no other abnormalities. A colonoscopy extending to the ileocecal valve is normal, except for moderate amount of flesh, fresh blood. The next step in managing this patient is... Well, the colonoscopy went all the way to the ileocecal valve, but remember Meckel's diverticulum is oh, approximately two feet from this ileocecal valve. So you would have to go a little further more uh, with the colonoscopy tube to look at that, but they stopped at the ileocecal valve. So if you look at this patient, um, the colonoscopy is already done, so you don't need to do a sigmoidoscopy. Um, an upper GI endoscopy is not really done in a, in, to diagnose um, a potential Meckel's diverticulum. It's not appropriate either. Um, abdominal x-ray or angiography is not really necessary because he's hemodynamically stable. There's no real um, need for that. So you're down to these two. And of these two, this is definitely the more appropriate one to diagnose Michael's diverticulum. Remember, this nuclear medicine technetium scan actually helps identify the ectopic gastric mucosa that is uh, contained inside the Michael's diverticulum. So it's a very specific test and will definitely be the appropriate one for this patient.